Hey guys, what's going on? This is Atrava here and in this video, we are going to take a look at the Gemini Nano model shipped inside of Chrome. So Google started shipping a new AI model called as Gemini Nano inside of Chrome releases in the dev versions and the reason behind it, it's very clever. So many websites nowadays use AI features. What they require is they pass the data to the server, the server processes it, they use certain kind of API keys which are paid and they get back the data. For example, if you want to summarize an article, if a publisher is already summarizing the article for you, it might go to the server, it might get processed and it might get back to you as the summary of the article. But Google thought, what if we took the processing to the user's device instead for such kind of things like summarizing an article, which is not that big of a deal, uh, a smaller AI model can do that. So what if we just offload that to the user's device and uh, which is a pretty good idea. And some people really like it. Some people really don't because they say that Chrome is already way too bloated. And now you're adding this AI model, <laughs> which is true. Like, I think there might be some kind of lag to enable it or disable it uh, in the future. But right now this is only enabled through the feature flags, which we are going to look. So in this video, we are first of all going to take a look at the model itself. We are going to see how it interacts, how we are going to interact it through some websites. I'm also going to show you how you can enable it in, inside your Chrome dev version. And then we are going to create a Next.js application. We are going to use the Vercel AI SDK and we are going to try to build a similar thing using uh, the AI SDK and using the Chrome model shipped inside of Chrome dev. So yeah, let's get started. All right, so we are at chromeaidemo.versal.app. I found it on Twitter. I, I cannot find the link anymore to the Twitter post. So like you can find this on Google as well. It's also indexed on Google, but you can type your message here and it's, it's like using the Chrome AI. So I can just type on hi and uh, I can just send the message and it will reply. Uh, note that it's pretty slow, uh, especially when I'm recording. This takes a very long time. I'm, yeah, it says hi. So we are going to say, who are you? Uh, sometimes it also fails on me. It's like complex questions do not really work, but yeah, it says I am a large language model trained by Google. So yeah, it does work. And there are a lot of different things you can play around here, but I want to show you how you need to enable this. So by the way, this is Chrome dev. So this won't work in the stable version of Chrome just yet. So it might work by the time you're watching this video. Like if it's like one or two months, it might work, but I'm not really sure when it's coming out to the public. Uh, if you go to this website, which is called Chrome AI pro, which is a very good domain name, uh, you can find instructions of doing this. Or if you do not have it enabled, you can also find instructions here, but I already have it enabled. That's why uh, I don't have these instructions here. So it's the same instructions. You can even use Canary. So it says, first of all, open this uh, flag. So optimization guide on device mode. So if you open this in a new tab, this should be set to enable bypass performance requirement. Uh, once you enable that, then you need to enable uh, prompt API for Gemini Nano. And uh, it just has a normal enable option. And then uh, you need to go to Chrome components. But uh, yeah, let me show you how it shows. If you go to Chrome components, it says optimization guide on device model. You need to check for update many times what happens and with me it happened as well that this optimization guide on device model just does not want to appear it does not appear at all so i searched a lot and uh, i found a lot of resources which told me that there's one simple trick you can make it to appear just go to your inspect element just go to console and just do await ai dot create text session create text session and just hit enter it will say it will first give an error if you don't have the model installed it will give you an error which is fine which is expected we, we want that error because it tells chrome that hey we need this model so please let us download it so after you do that just exit out of chrome open chrome again and once you go to chrome double slash components you should see optimization guide on device you might need to refresh the page like 10 to 15 times if you don't see it in the first go and then you can just click on check for update and it will download the model and you can start using it so yeah, now what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and use the Vercel AI SDK to see how we can implement 
the Chrome AI into a web apps so that next time you build some kind of blog application, you can use the Chrome AI to generate a summary without like using some kind of open AI key or something like that and uh, pay for it yourself. Why not just offload it to the user's device? It sounds evil, but <laughs> I don't know if it's exactly evil or not. Okay, I, I won't waste any more time. All right, so we are in our terminal. Let's go ahead and create an XJS application. So I'm gonna say bun x. If you want to use npm, just use npx. So bun x create next app, and I'm gonna call it Chrome AI uh, YT. I guess uh, yeah, I think this should work. And then I'm just going to use default settings. I also want to use the Tailwind CSS and stuff. Now let's just leave it to default. I don't want to waste time on this. So yeah. Now let's go to CD Chrome AI YT and uh, I'm gonna do code dot and I'm also gonna do, you know what? Let's just do code dot because we have two dependencies we want to install. So I'm just gonna make it full screen here. I trust myself. Thank you so much for asking. And now what we are gonna do is we are gonna open terminal and now we're gonna do bun install uh, Chrome AI and the second package is AI, which is like the Versal AI SDK. We're just gonna install these two and once they are installed, we are just gonna do bun dev. Let's wait for these two install, should not take a lot of time. Yeah, perfect, bun dev, turbo. So what does turbo do? I think it has something to do with Rust. So like uh, it, it makes it way faster and it's really not that faster for me when I'm recording a video, but uh, I think that's very important for me because if I use the normal mode, it just doesn't work properly for me. Let me get my browser window and I'm going to throw this browser window in the second window. Perfect. Now we can just go to localhost 3000. Yeah, as I said, it's slow. Yeah, perfect. Now, we are just gonna go, this is going to be a very simple application. Like I'm not going to make like some very complex thing. It's just going to be a chat GPT wrapper, but like way dumber. It, it's not going to have memory. What I want you to do is implement memory by your own. I just wanted to show you how you can implement this uh, Chrome AI into a Versal AI SDK and implement this kind of thing into your applications because I think it's very useful and it's very handy. So first of all, uh, since we are going to use client client side features, we are just going to use use client here because we are going to use the browser for like getting the access to the Chrome AI thing. And now we are going to remove every single thing here. Again, we are not focusing on the styling at all. Uh, we are just going to set everything to center. So I'm just going to say flex at screen, W screen, justify center. item center and flex call so that everything is how we expect and now we are just going to have a text area so text area and we are also going to have a class name for it which is going to be a text black so class name text black and uh, yeah we are going to have a state for it so i'm just going to copy the state states we need to have so that we will save a lot of time here so these are the states we need to have one is going to be input so which is going to be mapped to this so we are going to say value uh, we are going to say input and on change e set input e dot target dot value this should do the thing yeah perfect now we need a button uh, so we're going to say button uh, oops and we're just gonna say send and here we're gonna have a class name of bg green 600 p3 uh, for a little padding rounded md uh, w32 md5 i already have this made so i'm just copying the styles i really do not want to focus a lot on styles here and we are eventually gonna have an on click here but uh, after that we are also gonna have uh, P here, uh, P tag here for the response. Um, 
response and it's also going to have a class name of empty five so that we have a margin empty five so if we look at this right now it's just pretty simple like literally nothing it won't even work if you like click, click on something because we haven't even prepared the logic so uh, we need to create a new function we are going to say const send message and uh, this is going to be an asynchronous function and uh, we are going to map this button to that function so on click and again to do this this needs to be a client component and which we have used like use client on the top and now we can just say send message here now we can proceed with every single thing else so you can add try catch blocks to catch errors but this is just going to be a very simple demonstration so we are not going to do that so what we wanna, what we want to do is we want to destructure something but what do we want to destructure from await stream text from the versal ai sdk and here we there are two things first of all the model and the model we are going to use is chrome ai imported from chrome ai and i'm pretty sure it gives a typescript error which we need to ignore because this package is still in beta so that's why it's like that so in prompt we are just gonna put in like the input and uh yeah perfect and now we can just uh go ahead and try to stream the result at it uh, as it comes to our screen so what does stream text exactly do like uh if you have used chat gpt it generates answer sometimes word by word or sometimes letter by letter that's called as streaming because sometimes these models take time to generate a full answer so you don't want to keep the user on a loading screen and uh, not let them see the data already so we are just gonna get the data as soon as it's streamed and we're just gonna show it to user as it is no loading screens at all so now we need to set a variable temp result is equal to this empty string and now uh, actually this needs to be const and now we can just do for await const and uh, we need to get the text part from here so text oh yeah text stream sorry so text part from uh, of text stream and now oh yeah i think i think it's just doing its thing but um no this is not what we want to do we are going to say temp result here but then we also need to increment this so temp result plus equal to text part so oh this shouldn't be let i'm sorry yeah so what this is exactly doing is like the text stream gives us a new word every single time like whenever there is a new thing or i should not say word because it's not always word it returns it's tokens basically so whatever we get we want to increment it to what we already have and show it to the user and now uh, i'm sorry we are, are going to need to do ts signal here i'm not sure what's wrong with this but it works trust me and uh, if we go back if we refresh the page i i hope this works really i i just said trust me but yeah let's see i'm going to say hi and uh, it says an error browser not support which is a very good point because this is <laughs> this is literally not oh uh, yeah how can i be so dumb how can i be so dumb <laughs> yeah hi let's say send can we get a response let's open chrome console yeah it says hello and now we can say who are you and we can just say click on send and now we can expect a response let's wait yeah i'm a large language model trained by google and as, as you saw like you can rewind back 10 seconds and uh, you can see that it actually typed word by word or token by token uh that's how stream text works exactly so yeah uh, that's how you can implement chrome ai using versal ai sdk into your web apps so yeah that's it for this video i hope you guys really liked this and learned something new if that is the case please go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe button so that 
you support my channel and if you feel like you don't want to see my content you can always unsubscribe later what do you think about the chrome ai thing do you think it is pretty useful for developers so that they do not need to like uh have a lot of ai infrastructure lined up and like pay a lot of different things and to very small tasks and i said in this in double quotes like very small tasks because uh, these models are mini models these are not really capable of doing a lot of different things so do you think that it is good to offload that to the users computers uh, of course like i am pretty sure chrome is not going to enable this feature unless there's going to be like uh, like if there's going to be like a very uh, potato pc in that case chrome is going to disable this for sure but i think the ideal case is going to be like first try to compute it locally and if it's not working locally just use the servers i think that's going to be the trend moving forward but yeah let me know what do you think i really want to know your opinion in, and just let me know that in the comments below if you have any suggestions for this channel please also let me know that in the comments below i am very ready to create new content on the things you like to see on the channel so yeah that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one bye